philosophy to justify inaction, but does his spiritual duty, even though it may be personally inconvenient. So Krishna chastised Arjuna that he was anarya jushtam. This kind of thinking is not for Aryas, Aryans. It is for the non-Aryans. Krishna did not approve of Arjuna's inaction. So the whole Bhagavad Gita was spoken to Arjuna to make him Arya, spiritually progressive. At the end of Bhagavad Gita, Krishna inquired from Arjuna, What is your decision? Yatej hasasi tata kuru. And Arjuna replied, Krishye vachanam tava. Bhagavad Gita 18.73 Now I shall fight. I shall do whatever you say. And Krishna approved. Saeva yang maya tedya yoga prokta puratanaha bhakto si me shaka jeti rahasyam yetad utamam. That very ancient science of the relationship with the Supreme is today told by me to you because you are my devotee as well as my friend, and therefore you can understand the transcendental mystery of this science. Bhagavad Gita 4.3 now, fighting is not a very good business because it involves killing. But Arjuna was a warrior, a fighter. His duty was to fight for the right cause. So he fought for Krishna. Thus he became a devotee by fighting to satisfy Krishna. So everyone, no matter what their occupation, should be engaged to satisfy Krishna. That is our whole philosophy. Krishna has advised Sahajam karma konteya sadosham apinatya jet sarvarambha hidoshena dhumen agnir ivavritaha. Every endeavor is covered by some fault, just as fire is covered by smoke. Therefore, one should not give up the work born of his nature, O son of Kunti, even if such work is full of fault. Bhagavad Gita 1848. So one can perform any kind of work for which he is fit, but the result must be given to Krishna. That is the secret. You may work as a brahmana, an intellectual, as a kshatriya, as a, a warrior, as a businessman, as an engineer, a doctor, or whatever you may be. No type of work is condemned. Every kind of work is spiritual, provided its result is offered to Krishna. That is the secret of work in Krishna consciousness. And according to the esoteric teaching, such work is without any karmic reaction. So by denying Krishna, the foolish so-called yogis and philosophers and Hindus and whatnot are dooming themselves and anyone who follows them to having to accept the results of their karma and be reborn in the material existence life after life after life. Uh, because any work that we do for our own benefit results in karma, whether good or bad. We have to take another birth in order to accept the results of that karma. So this is attachment to material existence, and it can only be broken by offering the results of our work to Krishna as a sacrifice. And we'll get into this in future installments. The thing that we want to highlight in this particular episode is that Krishna comes to this world specifically to inform everyone of this fact, that if we want freedom from the rounds of birth and death in the material world, we have to work in such a way as to satisfy Him. That means, first of all, accepting the background philosophy, the esoteric teaching of the Vedic literature. And this means accepting Bhagavad Gita as it is. In other words, yes, Krishna is famous all over the world, and there are hundreds of editions of the Bhagavad Gita. But most of those misinterpret the Bhagavad Gita to be something impersonal. That Krishna doesn't mean, oh, surrender to him as a person. He means to surrender to the unmanifest Brahman within him or some such nonsense. No. Krishna says, Manmana bhava mad bhakto, madhyaji mangnamaskuru. Huh? Surrender to me. Think of me. 
become my devotee, worship me, mom. That's Sanskrit for me. So Krishna is speaking, and he is a person. So he is always speaking uh, about himself when he says me, mom, moi. How much more clear can it get? Yet they misinterpret because they have a vested interest in denying Krishna. And what is that? Well, if Krishna is not the Supreme Personality of Godhead, uh, and everything is ultimately impersonal, then there's no absolute standard of morality in the universe, and one can do whatever one likes. Therefore, we don't have to surrender to any authority, uh, we don't have to accept any moral standards, and we can engage in sense gratification uh, in an unrestricted manner, just like an animal. Isn't that wonderful? But uh, this nonsense has become the modern standard of so-called religion. Uh, therefore, Bhagavad Gita says, uh, no, uh, you cannot act like an animal, mudha. You cannot act like a miscreant, duskritino. Huh? You cannot act like the lowest of mankind, naradhama. You have to do your duty. And your duty is to follow the principles of religion which are directly enunciated by the Supreme Personality of Godhead. Religion cannot be concocted by an ordinary man. The standard in the Vedas is that the principles of religion are given by God himself. So God comes in the form of Krishna, speaks Bhagavad Gita, and gives religious principles. He also indicates the opposite, uh, what are irreligious principles. And we will always find that the people who reject Krishna also reject religious principles, and they act irreligiously. They're addicted to illicit sex, meat-eating, intoxication, gambling, mental speculation, and so many other kinds of sinful activities. Huh? Deception, dissimulation, disinformation. These are the people who have acted for centuries now to keep this esoteric teaching out of the hands of the public. Because if people in general were to become moral, they would become strong. They would think and act according to religious principles, and they would not be so easily seduced by sense gratification and controlled by a central government whose only interest is actually exploiting them economically. So we have to see the motivation behind the disinformation campaign that has existed for centuries to try to cover up the actual Vedic esoteric teaching and substitute some very vastly inferior concoction called Hinduism or something else. Um, this is not the actual Vedic philosophy. Because it's not the actual Vedic philosophy, it doesn't deliver the end product of the Vedic process, which is complete self-realization and liberation from material entanglement. So those who advertise themselves as teaching yoga, but do not teach Krishna, are not really teaching yoga. They're teaching some concoction based on some other teaching. And the result of that will not be the same as the original process of yoga given in the Vedas. That's obvious to any thinking person. So now you have the original teaching. You have Bhagavad Gita as it is. So we encourage you to use this teaching, act on it, and reclaim your perfect body. We hope you've enjoyed this edition of My Perfect Body. This is David Hughes, your host, reminding you to visit us on the web at esotericteaching.org, where you can purchase the complete Esoteric Teaching Introductory Seminar DVD and many CDs of transcendental music and mantras.